بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أفضل المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وبعد uh, The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم teaching and everything that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم teaches is important and we can learn from no matter what time we live in or place we live in and of the things that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم taught a hadith that in the past, it was very important. Uh, sometimes when people study, this is some of the, yani, one of the hadith that they studied of, yani, very early on. Uh, nowadays, some of us feel that it's not that important yet. It is, right? And the uh, hadith is a very fiqh-oriented hadith, but has many meanings. We can learn a lot about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even in, in rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a, a narration that it regards purity. You know, when you open the chapter on purity, uh, it's very important to be pure. If I want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if, if I'm not in, the, in, the, in a state of ritualistic purity, state of tahara, state of wudu, my salah itself is compromised. It's a shard, right? So that we, we, we achieve this purity using water. So one of the hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told, very pragmatic, very practical, yet has very deep meanings. And the hadith is the following. The hadith says the following. Regarding water, you know, like when, when I want to make wudu, and uh, how, how pure must be the water for, for me, to, for my wudu to be valid? It's a very uh, legitimate concern. So the Prophet said, if the water that you have, the, 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 the container of it is as, as large as a qullatayn, like you know, a specific type of jar, when the water is so abundant, لا يحمل الخبز. Don't worry if there is some impurity in it. It's still pure. And that's a very pragmatic hadith because back in the day, it's not like now. Alhamdulillah, we live in an age that this is not no concern. You open like water is very pure. Alhamdulillah, it's treated, it's pure. If something falls in it, no problems. You open the tap, you get you know, it's it's running right, free running water. But back in the day, it was difficult. It was different. To get pure water is very hard. Even in some places in the world today, you have to walk for an hour. You know, to go to a well and carry water on your back all the way to... So what happens if I do that and something small falls in? And it's a huge container. Does that mean, خلاص, the whole thing is impure? It's not acceptable? Is it good enough? When is it good enough? Must it be 100% pure for it, for it to be good enough for Allah? Because Allah is a Quddus. And here the Prophet tells us no. The fact is, if, if the water is abundant as about 56, 55, you know, scholars differ a little bit, liters, right? Then it's okay, don't worry about it. Even if something is in it, go ahead, make wudu with it, stand in front of Allah, your prayer is accepted, you are good enough for that. What is the implication of this hadith? And again, I leave the fiqhi part to Imam Mustafa. Is the, there is a very deep meaning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That sometimes, similarly, as a believer, I'm not 100% pure. I want to be pure. I want to be free of sins. I want to do things in, you know, perfectionism. That I have to be, you know, even if it reaches the OCD. Some people have OCD. And OCD meaning what? Like, I pray Allah. No, I didn't say Allah, Allah, Allah. No, no, I didn't pronounce it right. You know, Bismillah. No, 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 that was not right. It has to be perfect to the extent they can continue their prayers. And say, wait, it's good enough. I know it's not perfect, it's good enough. You're trying your best, which is what works here. Go ahead and continue. Now, the meaning of this hadith I want to share with you is the following. Two things. In the upper world, sometimes that as a believer, I make mistakes. Sometimes I have sins. And so that the first requirement is what to repent. Make a for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes I do and I'm very sincere and I really want to stop and I'm very... But I can't leave it. Sometimes people have this practical problem. They are, they have one them. It's very difficult for them to leave. And then they come and they ask, what can I do? And yes, of course, make tawbah and make istighfar. But I tell you, I know I've been trying for years and years. I'm not pure. The last thing you want is if you feel that because of one them, you're not pure. You're not good enough for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not correct. So what does this hadith tell us? Tell us? If there is a little bit of impurity, for the water to be pure, what must happen? You couldn't remove it. You tried your best. You have to try. You try to keep your water pure. Something fell in it. When will it not matter? When the water is so abundant. 
So a constant love that we learn. Inna al hasanat yudhiqa sayyat. So for a person who's slipping, who's trying, sincere, but he cannot stop. He has a mistake. You remind him of this hadith. إِذَا بَلَغَ الْمَرْءُ كُلَّتَيْنِ لَمْ يَحْتُمْ Okay, I know that you have one sin, it's impure, right? And you're trying your best, but it's still. So what's the solution? Make sure to do uh, your, your, your hasanat, your good deeds have to be so abundant. Make sure that it's like a qullatayn, right? In such a way that this doesn't matter anymore. So go ahead, Allah's al ghafur and al shakur. So if al hasanat you think say, yeah, good deeds, omit bad deeds. If I cannot stop bad deeds and I'm trying and I must, and I'm seeking istighfar and I must, but if I keep failing, the solution is tell me what good you can do. Is there something you can do good? Yes. Make a lot of it. Make it so abundant. And remember that hadith. al hasanat al Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept and make sure to have so... So, what can you do good? Can you read Quran? Read a lot. What can you do good? Charity? Give a lot. Dhik? A lot of dhik. A lot of dua. Make sure that I have something that is so abundant. That the Ibn al like small things, if it falls in it, it will be acceptable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the first lesson. Right? That there is, while yes, I want to be pure and I want to omit all my sins as, and I should, the other path is what? Focus on the positive. Please, and we tell people that. And it's actually a sign of a good tawbah. إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنْ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا from the conditions that I know that my tawbah and my repentance is accepted is what? That after I repent, you know, I, I'm sincere. I, you ask a person, after you repented, did you start doing deeds? And tell yeah, yeah, since I did that sin, now I'm doing things I didn't used to do before. That's a sign of, you know, accepted repentance. It's because I see I did one then, I have to surround it with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, that's, that's the right approach. Right, so that's the first lesson. Three lessons, the second lesson. Why that is true, with uh, many impurities, many slips, there are some sins and slips of the heart that an atom weight of is not accepted. The only thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala insists you have to be 100% pure is tawheed. Is la ilaha illallah. Ana aghma aghniya an shirk. Associating anything with Allah, small or big, is completely invalidated. And that's why the, the most, one of the most dangerous things is riyah. Showing off. Shirk al khafi Because that, you, I can have something that's really good and you just mix a little bit of riyah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, that is not acceptable. The heart, there is two things in the heart. A riyah, meaning sincerity, that I worship only Allah. That's something that was intended for Allah. I cannot compromise it even with an ayota of anything. That's an area I really have to make you. The second is what? Arrogance. Subhanallah. An atom way of arrogance, that is enough for me not to envision. That's how serious. So, what we have uh, in the upward world, outward sins, the inward sins of the heart are deadly. Deadly. Because they're like poison. A drop of them can destroy. So, arrogance, self admiration, arrogance, and reality. If I have to be like so yani adamant about purity, let it be the purity of my tawheed. That's the most important thing. The third lesson, brothers and sisters, when dealing with each other, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, has, he could have made it very difficult. Your water your, your has to be 100% pure. He did it. Good enough. It's good enough. Don't worry. You tried, but something fell in it. Come, use it. It's still usable. It's still good. You're still okay with me. You're good enough. When I deal with people, and they have been good for me for years, years and years and years, then they slip one time. Can I remember this hand? Because I know a person that did this. Had a relation with someone, and this person you know, he made, made a mistake, slipped. Really wrong. And he was so shy and coming like broken. And this other person, when he met him, smiled, and then called him this hadith. And your water has exceeded all the time. It says water, like when it reaches this amount, it cannot pertain anything impure. And your good deeds with me, your goodness to me over the years, has far exceeded this. 
So it's okay, you this slip of yours, this minor thing of you, don't worry about it. Our relation is still pure. My heart is still pure. My, I don't carry anything. Because you did so many good things. So that's a third lesson. Allah accepts from us. Accepts that the water is impure, with little bit small, and he accepts. Let us be the same with each other. If somebody is so good for me, if a sheikh is so doing so many good deeds, let not one minor thing, one word that annoys me, one fatwa that I... It's okay. Remember that hadith. That remember when we give each other this. That if I do so many good things, if somebody did so many good things for me, let me not invalidate him because of a small bad thing that he did. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow our hearts to be perfectly pure. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us sincere tawbah and sincere forgiveness. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to do such an abundant amount of good deeds that even, Ya Rabbi, if we slip and we make mistakes, that this is valid, that our good deeds will omit our bad deeds. And finally, one good deed is with ten, worse ten bad deeds. Destroy this someone that his once overweighs his tens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts by giving us tens and tens and tens for everything good work that we do. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to take advantage of this. I ask Allah to open unto us the doors of all good deeds and close unto us the doors of all evil deeds. Subhanahu wa ta'ala wa bihamdik la ilaha.